We are hello. live. We are live, Dr. Dominic. How are you, Hello, sir? hello. I'm pretty good. I'm here at the con in Vegas. With, uh, with your man. With your with man. man back there as well. Yeah. So, guys, welcome to Sidetrack, your first time on here. And Thank we're you. going to be talking oh, Star Trek with yeah. your mate Mark, who's going to be defending yeah. Star Trek's honor, whereas I'm going to point out a few of the things I don't like about it. This is the new, star, the new Star Trek. I, I might mention your Star Trek a little bit. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I was not told In that. Way. Your Star Trek was, to be fair, the, my favorite Star Trek episode of any Star Trek episode ever was one of your Star Treks. Which so, was what? Uh, Regenerations. Uh, I just love that. And Scott Bakula is probably my favorite captain. No so, shit. The most underrated. Well, he's, he's just underrated. And like yeah. everyone goes to card and whatever. But I just think, nah, nah, Captain Archer. And he, he yeah, good. But now he I love Scott. Him. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 yeah. yeah, God bless. Well, but, he was um, an absolute yeah. mensch to work for. He could we couldn't have had a better guy at the top of the food chain. He was just uh, he made those years glorious. And not everyone in Hollywood does that when they are top of the food chain. So yeah, God bless him. No, I've seen him in a few interviews. He comes across like he does on the on the show to be honest so yeah is he that nice and obviously you yeah. got to work with jolene as well so that's obviously a bonus as well um, yeah yeah working with I, jolene I, oh, yeah yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. yeah yeah she was all right <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys yeah. doing for the rest of the day then when you're uh we're going to be sitting and signing obviously it's uh, a signing event here in the daytime um and then later on tonight we're going for a very lovely dinner there's a high roller fanboy that takes us out uh, to a couple of dinners here yeah bless him dave tab thanks dave uh and we'll be at hell's kitchen tonight for uh, the, the chef's table at gordon ramsay's restaurant um oh, yeah be right. pretty nice yeah so that's got yeah. that's right to be famous and in Vegas, isn't it? It's not bad, I have to say. God bless this job, and uh, God bless all you fans out there. And yeah, uh, yeah. it's lovely Probably coming here with my mate. And uh, now we got a shuttle pod show presence here. We're really excited. This is our first year, uh, sort of, you know, uh, bringing the show to the to the con. Yeah. And I think um, by this time next year, we're we're going to be quite a presence here. Um, the show's really taking off. It is. And, it, uh, yeah, we need all you guys out there, and I'm the guy banging the drum. We love that you chime in and come and support and watch and all that. What we need now is for you all to become little Patreon members and help support okay. the show financially. Okay, we're just at the tipping point, uh, but it's got to start paying for itself, and we're very close. So, please, if you can find that five dollars in your pocketbook. Uh, we really need that, uh, and it's a it's a donation. It's not a it's not for the mugs. It's not for the t-shirts. Though you will get that. But we just need your support financially, you know. Yeah, but we like um, it's time. We like the t-shirts. You we? and you and we and you can have them, uh, <laughs> but don't think of it in those terms. Are we going to fight? Aren't we going to fight now? Yeah, we're going to fight. fight. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, <laughs> well, Mark is going to lose, and I'm going to win, obviously. And but I mean, Tom, you should be on my side. You're British. So you should be on my side. Well, I'm 30 years in America now, man. So you know. I go both ways. <laughs> and you were on Star Trek a bit. So yeah. Uh, let it slide. But uh, no, thank you so much then. And yeah, um, I will try well, not to let... be too hard on him. I'm going to let Connor sit down. Uh, it's going to be an interesting battle. Uh, I actually just have been watching a bit of the new Strange New Worlds. And I I, I like it. I got to say. I yeah. wasn't sure that I was going to like it. But I watched the, uh, the Lower Decks episode when they brought the two. Um... It was fun, wasn't it? I mean, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's proper uh, Star Trek as well. A bit risky, yeah, really, a bit, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, a bit camp and uh, some good humor. And uh, no, they all they all they all fill out very well. It looks like it's a, they've obviously you know, production values are so much better these days and for, for less money, as it were, or the same money. And it well, looks yeah, bloody, I mean, it looks fantastic. They spend like yeah. six or seven million quid an episode, apparently. Do they? Well, they're, they're doubling our budget then, and uh, it shows yeah. on the screen, it looks bloody good. So, and listen, I'm going to let Connor sit down and say hello to you real quick. Yeah. Uh, good well, luck against Mark, because he's a tough competitor, let me tell you. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to have your work cut out. All right, buddy. Here Thank you, go. you so much. Thanks, Malcolm. Hey, man. 
Trip, you're dead. You can't be yes, on uh, well, I'm sort of dead. Sort of, yeah. That episode didn't really happen, so I think we're okay. Hey, I'm just mostly dead. Yeah. But yeah. Well, Connor, thank you so much for sitting down with us and saying hello. And yeah, man, pleasure. Um, I, my internet started going crazy. I had a lovely blue screen all planned, but the internet started going crazy, so drop that. But um, how how are you finding Vegas, sir? Oh, I've done this. I've done this many, many, many years. Uh, um, it's always great. It feels this year different in the sense that kind of we've gone back to pre-pandemic uh, energy. Uh, so that's nice. I was going to say, like, like last year must have felt weird. Because I suppose last year would have been the first year sort of properly back. No, the year that was really weird was when we had to have the plexiglass screens in front of us and split between our photo ops and that kind of stuff. But um, last year was in a different location, and we're, it's, it's nice to be back at the Rio. Yeah. How is the sort of everything going on in Hollywood affecting things? So do you, I mean, because obviously the strikes and everything else, does it make it more complicated or are you just actually, you're there for the fans anyway, so does it really matter? It does complicate it a bit because um, we're not allowed to really talk about the show that we might or might not have been on. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know, look, hey, we've got a lot to fight for here. Um, and uh, it seems to be a watershed moment. We're sitting here at the Rubicon, and um, I, I think that uh, we need to, one, the writers and the actors need to get together and, um, you know, find a way for us to all make a, a, a fair living. Yeah. Yeah, we keep telling people on this channel, it's, it's not about the 5% of actors and writers that you know their name, it's about the 95% of actors that you might not know their names. And that bring us all this amazing entertainment, and it's the future of Hollywood we're fighting for. And look, we're we're, we're all fighting for a middle class life. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. You should be able to live. Twiggly, like some people said, oh, they're just actors. I'm, th I'm like, no, these people. Are, it's like entertainment and media. That's the that's the first thing that goes. And sometimes, you know, in, when society struggle, and we should fight for it. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> What do fascists do? They control the art. Exactly, yeah. And yeah, and we want a free. Well, yeah. We want you guys to do what you do. We want to be able to live and do what we do and uh, support our families, and that's it. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. all. That's all any of us want, really, isn't it? Is to yeah, exactly. Look after our kids, exactly. and look after ourselves, and eat, and indeed, uh, pay our rents, and something you love. Yeah, indeed, indeed. In the process, but um, that's me. So, have you been watching Strange New Worlds? Because I know Dominic said he's been watching a bit. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. I, in fact, I have not seen a lot of New Trek. Um, and oddly, I'm I'm here to call you out into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a reputation as somebody that doesn't like New Trek, and I'm not. I love it. I just have been honest about the bits I don't like. Um, yeah. Listen, I, I've heard those. I've heard those arguments as well, and um, uh, you know, I, I do think, and from what I've heard, Strange New Worlds finds a balance between uh, the new and the uh, legacy, as it were. It's like Roddenberry track. It's very much like if that's what it feels like. But it's yeah. it's it's amazing. But uh, I, I kind of thank you so much for sitting down with us just for two minutes and um, enjoy Vegas not too much. Thanks, man. Nice to see you. <laughs> Well, I, should I introduce this? Yeah. Well, all okay. right. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> He's going down. We've got old Trek versus legacy Trek versus new Trek. <laughs> Gentlemen, put your gloves on. Be very kind to each other, but kick each other's ass. Ding, ding. <laughs> make it ding, good. Ding. All right, man. Take Thank care. Thank you so much, Connor. Yep. Thank you, Connor. These ours? Yes. Is there a cup cup? One's for me. Is there like a regular cup? Maybe. Did he get his? Did Dominic get his? Hi. Hello, Mark. How you doing, sir? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm very, very well. And did I hear you ordering three whiskeys? <laughs> Isn't it like 10 a.m.? <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm not even drinking. Are we done? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is that yours?
There's some Phillies whiskeys. Ah, Bye. sorry, it's a it's a crowd. Hey, dumb. There's not one down, did you? That's yours, dumb. <laughs> hide it, hide it, hide it. <laughs> yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Sorry, uh, it's uh, it's a little hectic here. There's a lot of people here. That's amazing um, to see. I mean, I haven't been to Vegas Comic Con, so it's just amazing to see this. Uh, I don't feel like I should wave at people. <laughs> anyway, we're having a good time. Me next year. Honestly, if if these two of Comic Cons and San Diego Comic Con are this close together again next year, yeah, I'm going it. I'm doing it. That's our plan. Sidetrack will be at. Um, so you tapped yeah. up uh, Connor and Dominic. I told them that you were challenging me to defend new uh, new Trek, which is something I'm very, very happy to do. Excellent. And let's get into it. But first of all, have you seen the musical episode? Yes, I watched it this morning, in fact. And thoughts? All Trek is obviously... Oh, I loved it. Um, I was on the verge of tears by the time the episode was done because uh, I love musicals and I love Star Trek and everything about it for me was fun. I wish there were more Star I'm shocked it took so long to have a Star Trek musical. Well, they've like tried an official Star Trek musical. Apparently Picard nearly did it. And I, I really can't see how that would have worked. Well, they're the same uh, filmmakers who make Strange oh. New Worlds and Picard, so that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> totally, though, I don't see how it would have worked, but hey. Eh. Let's yeah, start. I agree. Maybe all of season two should have been a musical. Then uh, the the light plot would have been um, more fun, you know, well, to song. A... Well, I've put together a couple of little statements that go to what well, I've had a problem with Star Trek for a little while, and we're just going to discuss them. But I've been purposefully a little bit confrontational in the way I've written them, so please don't blame me if they're written like this on purpose. I'm already getting a lot of crap for being a Star Trek hater, and I'm not. I'm a bloody Trekkie. I love Star Trek. Um, oh, I made sure to tell Connor and Dominic that you don't hate Star Trek. <laughs> no, I love Star Trek. It's my. I was like, my he loves Trek. it. Um, but like everything that we love, sometimes, you know, you get a little disappointed. But and Strange well, New Worlds, yeah, the Strange New Worlds musical was not really Star Trek, and would have been better, better apparently, as a Christmas special or something along those lines. Um, I honestly believe my only real problem with the musical is that it's episode nine of a 10 season run, 10 episode run. I see. If it had been like a Christmas special or a, a surprise 11th episode, I'd have been happier with it. Well, maybe the uh, season finale is going to be a surprise 11th episode. Well, if it's a double episode, I'll, I'll be less angry about the musical. I have to admit. Um, you said you're nearly in tears, though. Why <laughs> was it that I was just happy? Well, one, I was tired. Um, <laughs> I'm running on about three hours of sleep. Connor, I don't know if he told you, but he won nine hundred dollars on the slots last night. Um, so that's kind of, yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, we're meeting all these amazing Star Trek people who are incredible, um, who are fans of the show and just fans of Star Trek and. Uh, having such a good time that it's hard to go to sleep at the end of the night. Yeah, I, I yeah, you gotta be buzzing. Yeah, I just I, I can't wait. To, it's just oh yeah, Bruce <laughs> Bruce Horan is right there. <laughs> That's right. You and so is Anthony Anthony Rapp. Yeah. No way. Can you see the names? I can. I can't really read them in, in this, but I see. Oh yeah. No way. Yeah. Uh, uh, was there. Tawny Tawny Newsom is right here. No, uh, Bonnie Gordon is right here. Gary Graham is right here. Uh, everyone is right here. It's really fun. No, like somebody said, Jeffrey Coombs was there, and I, I joked that. How would you know? Yeah, he's right here. Are? How would you know? Yeah, how would you know it's Jeffrey Coombs? Yeah, Jeffrey. Um, Jeffrey is playing all of the uh, people attending the convention. Oh yeah, they're just. I, I, you, I, I would just have a running joke every time I announce anybody. I, if I was Jeffrey Coombs, I would just walk on. <laughs> That's funny. And, is Benjamin Cisco? I would just walk on. <laughs> um, but I mean, for me, I thought the songs were okay in Strange New Worlds. I thought uh, I loved Nurse Chapel's song, um, I'm Ready. I thought that was a great yeah. song. I, loved. I really loved uh, uh, Lon's song about loving Kirk, about sh uh, 
sharing her emotions. Yeah, I thought that was better. Feelings. From the advert, it looked like they were going to end up in bed together, but it was just her <laughs> dream. Um, but uh, for me, though, sci-fi should be should have an element of science to it. Does it matter to you in the slightest that the reasoning behind the singing was utter nonsense? <laughs> Sorry, somebody in the chat said, I know that person back there. That's Ange. <laughs> uh, what was your question? I'm sorry. Um, so it's just, as a sci-fi fan, I think science fiction should have a set of rules. I think it should be, you know, have some science to it. Does sure. it matter that the reason why they started singing, they really did try to have like a scientific explanation for it, but it was nonsense. Does that matter? Oh, I mean, all science in uh, sci-fi is nonsense because it's all magic, right? Uh, yeah. We try very hard to come up with plausible uh, explanations for the technological leap. But at the end of the day, uh, we need this to work for our plot. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's just that's something you have to accept if you're a Star Trek fan. You know, uh, people will say warp drive is implausible. People will say subspace communication period is implausible. Uh, all of the things that they do in Star Trek is completely improbable technologically. It's it's no different than magic. Uh, so uh, I don't know that that's an argument that I accept from you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think all sci a lot in Enterprise, a lot in Star Trek through the ages, even back to TNG, whatever, they would take a nub of something that scientifically was a theory or something that made sense, and sure. then they built a story around it. Well, what um, happened in this episode? Uh, it was what um, the a time a subspace fold. Yeah. Right, and uh, they hit it with the some frequency, and it resonated. Yeah. And, and it made everyone really sing. Bubble of reality. Um, I, I, it seems I mean, to me that it's it's a musical episode of Star Trek. I don't know that the science needs like we don't need a panel of the most brilliant minds on Earth to tell us that the science behind it is pristine. I think hmm. it was just fun to see a musical episode, and it was nice. I think that they, you know, tried to explain it instead of just letting it be a musical. Yeah, they maybe, try. maybe I, I, my opinion might change on that, but I'd have just done psychic alien that lives inside the subspace fold was trying to communicate with the crew, and that's how they tried to communicate. There you but go, that's the most Star Trek way to do it. But they didn't, they tried to create like a subspace improbability, improbability, improbability sphere or something. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, wave. It made that, that did make me chuckle. I have to admit, when they were, when they were actually straight face, I was just like, <laughs> <"That's stupid." laughs> you're, "You're actually right." I think uh, an alien in the fold uh, who received the music, the music from Uhura and Spock, mm. and then trying to communicate with them, uh, making them communicate only in musicals in emotionally vulnerable moments is yeah. actually probably a better. Because then I like that it, idea. They'd have to all be psychic for it to work anyway, because obviously they all start dancing in synchrony. So they would have to be, there'd have to be some sort of psychic thing going on for it to work. And and it's just, just oh, to me, it's just didn't. But I, I was, I was there going, please be an alien, please be a psychic alien, please be a psychic alien. And it's a source space fault. <laughs> oh, no, for God's sake. Um, the only bit of the episode that made me physically angry was the Klingons boy band moment. Oh my God, I loved it. I stopped it. I literally stood up. I rewound it and I watched that moment again because uh, that was some that was solid gold. And the the uniforms they were wearing, it was, it was, they were I loved it. it as soon as I saw him earlier on in the episode, I was like, "Yeah, they're going to do some something silly with that clean up." <laughs> and, um, um, I love that it was the actor that played the chief engineer from the first season, whose name has just yep. gone out of my head. Um, I love that he was the king. But um, I, I, I've read because I did a video immediately after doing this, and I have to admit, I said I'm, I'm, I don't like. This I loved the crossover episode. I adored it. I thought it was the best Star Trek episode I've seen in ages. This was a step too far for me. Um, oh, that's too bad. But tell you what, the comments though have been so. This was a proper. You don't really have marmite in your country, do you? In America, Bruce Horak is literally right here. 
He's <laughs> <laughs> right there. Um, but I tell you, what, I get into the comments. It, it's such a divisive episode. I mean, New Trek is divisive. I think it's fair to say with New Trek is, you know, people. Some people. The, I mean, a huge part of the community uh, precedes New Trek, so that kind of I think is just that goes hand in hand. I think we talk about this a lot on our show. People tend to think that the Star Trek that was their gateway Trek hmm. is the only real Trek, and everything else is silly or old or new or. So I don't know. In psychology, uh, so I've, I've, I come from a psychology background. That's my what I went to uni and did something. Mm -hmm. And they call it sort of the golden age thinking. And um, it's everyone has that those bands yeah. that they loved, like, like sixteen to twenty five. Yeah. That's when music and everything after that music just died. And I do wonder if there's an element of that with Star Trek. He goes, well, no, I that my golden age of Star Trek was yeah. TNG, and everything else is just stupid. Um, I think, I, I think that's. I think that's a real thing, and I actually think the way you put it is way better than because I've tried to explain this a lot. That this is my working theory, and you calling it the golden age conundrum. Mm. Uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that from you. That's a, that's a good yeah. explanation. It's the same in music, honestly. Everyone thinks that, like, say, music died when they were about 25 years old, and it didn't. It just changed. Um, but but yeah. Um, okay, put it this way then: Do you think this musical episode? Or would you agree with me that this musical episode would have been better as a Christmas special or a bonus, just not as the ninth episode of this season? Uh, I think uh, a a musical Christmas special would have been amazing. I hope mm. they have one. Yeah. Uh, Santa in it, because obviously the rules went straight out the window. So Santa Claus could have come in, done a little bit of a dance. It would have been ace. Um, <laughs> with the elves. Obviously, um, I'm being facetious, um, or even the bonus 11th episode. Um, like I said, I suspect, uh, I have a suspicion that there's something in store for us with the se se season finale, hmm. uh, and uh, it just didn't seem it seemed they probably had a big uh, narrative you know, about face that is probably more important than, you know, a a musical episode, I think, by definition, would have to be basically a throwaway. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, you know, you're never going to want to draw on that more than just like an inside joke. You know, mm -hmm. some future show will reference that time the Enterprise made everyone in the galaxy start living Same. in a musical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon? Is that what it's called? Schmigadoon? Schmigadoon. Uh, that was great. That was mm. fun. Um, I think that uh, it should have been maybe not a Christmas special, but, you know, I kind of like that it uh, was uh, like uh, we got a week away from some of the dramatic storytelling. You know, sometimes it gets a little heavy with all the drama. It's nice to have a throw in. Have we had that much drama in this season? Really? Sure. I mean, Spock and his uh, wife, their relationship is dead or not dead. His relationship with uh, Nurse Chapel, uh, Pike uh, is struggling with, hmm. you know, being an interesting captain. Um, it's his chef skills that he's struggling with. He can't quite get that cool chef. <laughs> um, I've, I've heard you talk about it. I actually like that he's a chef. It's fun for me. Because I'm a chef. I like that, yeah, that, but th there's been a lot of cooking. <laughs> it's, I I'm like the other aspect to his thing, but it's every week he's sort of like he's cooking something else. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot, but um, it makes me hungry every time I watch Star Trek. Now I'm like, I need to, I need to go get something to eat afterwards, which is fun. But uh, I, I just think that I just wonder whether it's one. There's not enough Star Trek in the season. You know, what I mean, it's it's like we've had the, the Spock becoming a human being comedy episode, the, the crossover episode, and the musical. That's three out of ten episodes that are like risky, fun, silly episodes. And I'm wondering maybe that's a one too many, maybe a little bit more Star Trek. Um, I don't know. I see what you're saying, uh, but I think. In the glut 
of Trek that has come recently, it's all been so dramatic yeah. that I don't mind that the that we've had three episodes out of the last nine that are um, lighthearted and fun. Uh, I will I will always I will always say you know we should maintain that balance. You know, I think the next generation, I think the original series, I think uh, even Deep Space Nine and and uh, less voyager but enterprise found a balance uh the drama was always there the um the drama was always there but they were still always able to throw a joke in or like wink at it and have fun and we don't see that much since discovery so it was nice to just revel in it i, I would argue that, yeah that, that discovery was so serious and so dramatic and, and, and heavy-handed yeah something a bit different or oh, big heavy storylines as well that you know and that there'd been no let up really there was there was no light-hearted side to it, or very little it's nice to have something going the other way but oh, okay i think i won that one i think that's one nil to me i think Did you, you? <laughs> we'll, we'll keep score we'll keep score um, okay canon doesn't matter in new trek sticking to the rules is boring anyway <laughs> How much does canon matter when you're talking about Trek? Oh, heavens. I think the big canon matters. Uh, so we were just having a conversation here about, um, well, there's one of the panels here is about the difference between head canon, uh, the, the canon that fans kind of run with, uh, versus mm -hmm. what we actually see. And um, I don't have a problem. What do they call it? Retconning? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't bother me, as long as it's not for a dumb reason. Uh, I have no problem accepting that uh, it's been 60 years since this thing started, and there's going to be some red cone, <laughs> just because everything has changed. Society has changed, culture has changed, technology has changed. Um, I think even in the in the in the narrative art, the uh, telling the stories, we the people who make Star Trek are learning what works and what doesn't, what what makes things easier and what makes things more difficult, and try to make that adjustment so that storytelling is more dramatic, more interesting, um, and not a throwaway. So I, I don't mind these retcons. I think I think they're probably good. Hmm. I mean, I think they've, they've even they've ref they reference it in Strange New Worlds now. All the time that they reference that yeah. different. I mean, in the in the spin-off episode, Boimler, why is Spock so different? And and yeah. so like, so they are listening yeah. to the event, and so they're even sort of making little jokes about it now. Yeah, um, and they're having fun. Yeah, but I just, I just love it when Trekkies, when whenever they um sort of change something in canon or or something gets a bit confusing, um, Trekkies will think of an excuse to make it quite make sense. And um, they'll, they, they, they'll, 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 yes, but you remember in that episode when you mentioned this with the thing, and that's why that made that. And it's like, sparks our creativity that we have to sort of fill in the blank from this episode, from some, particularly from New Trek. But um, I wonder if we, I, I think I'm quite negative towards New Trek. <laughs> but I have to try to drag myself back and remember. That TNG used to break canon all the time. Star yes. Trek used to, the original series used to, and that was when it was fresh and new. And they used to break their own toes occasionally. Oh, they would break their own canon in the same episode in the original series. <laughs> <laughs> like we just forgot. Um, yeah. So maybe we shouldn't worry about it too much. But when we do things like the technical manuals and things like this, and they really try to put detail behind the track. And then yeah. forget about it. I, well, I, I find that a little irritating. I will say that all of those, because you know, I'm obsessed with the technical manuals and the additional materials that are available for Star Trek mm. fans, Star Trek encyclopedias, things like that. Uh, but they're not actually created by the people who make and write Star Trek. They're made I mean, by uh, the original technical manual was it was written by Rick Berman, wasn't it? I think it was written by uh, Mike Akuda and Rick Akuda. Berman Sherp. Yeah. But that was um, just for the Enterprise D, right? Yeah, yeah, the Enterprise D. Yeah, yeah. And there's not much canon to break there. 
No, I mean, I like I bought the, the, the moment that manual came out. I'm like, when is the saucer going to crash land on a planet? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we got it. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely going to happen. But yeah, as soon as they decided that saucer could separate, we all yeah. knew. It we all know <laughs> it was crash. It was going to afford that special effect. It was definitely going to crash. Um, is there a line though? Is there is there a line that they just can't cross, or do you think if the story dictates it, then it's okay? I think it's a moving line. I think it's a gray area. I don't think it's a hard, you know, you know, white line on the on the road. It's um. I think if it's not too egregious, uh, and also, like I said, we change. Uh, society is so different now than it was mm. 20 years ago, than it was 60 years ago. Uh, we, we, uh, generically speaking, we as a population, as a people, understand the techno babble significantly better than back in the day. Um, yeah. So it's getting harder to make that, you know, to make it sound legit yeah, it's harder to educated. impress people we're more educated we can, we can google it and say does that make sense so like my my star trek <laughs> say hi to erica hey erica how are you he says hi how are you oh nice <laughs> to meet you it's jay hi jay i'm sorry i can't yeah. hear you <laughs> no no problem i do sign language but not very well i do sign language not very well <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can steal his earphones at the end. Yes. Okay. Please do. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> see, Erica comes on and everyone gets much more happy. See, we, we've, we've got <laughs> for the next 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Um, but, but yeah, I, I just think, um, I think there is a there is a line. I think there are rules. And I think New Trek has been a bit fast and loose with some of them. But I've I agree with that. Stop worrying about it so much. Oh, I think that's great for you, for yeah. your mental health, for your life, for your family. <laughs> I mean, I really like these conversations that you and I have, but it's it's, it's probably better if you just enjoy it. <laughs> I try to anyway. Um, I, I remember coming. We're going to talk about the J.J. Abrams Star Trek in a minute, but I remember coming out of there just going, "No, it's not this." And if they've, they've made the Enterprise water powered, and <laughs> getting really angry. And I'm like, yeah. It's a fun film. I watched it again last night. It's a fun film. It's calm down. Uh, forgive me a second. I'm noticing that we're getting some uh, super chats on our YouTube ah. page. Uh, Gavitron says, my problem with New Trek is that it seems the writers are trying to fix the work of former writers rather than honor it. The exception being Picard Season 3. Um, yeah. yeah, I kind of... I don't know that they're trying to fix the old work so much as they're trying to make their own work. Mm. Uh, I would say uh, I'm sorry Gavitron that we can't pipe you in because that would be a fun thing to talk about uh, John I was 16 years old when Star Trek the original series came on the air and I have uh, not believed that it was the only great Trek each Trek has its own value with the franchise and I've enjoyed each one of them over the years and I agree with you John 100% uh, each, each show has its crowd yeah 100% um Second, I will uh, that, that comment just a second. I think uh, I'm not. Oh, there you go. I'm not no black hat. Um, yeah, I think we should get a bit of Star Trek storyline crossover with some professional wrestling. <laughs> Pike versus <laughs> the How That's amazing. How the Gorn in this in strange new worlds. Um, that would be amazing. Um, a Gorn wrestler. Yeah. Well, we've already seen it a little bit. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that's how they came things. into being. <laughs> yeah. In fact, um, the guy, the guy who played that Gorn is right here on the no. other side of this. Yeah, <laughs> just run over and karate chop him. <laughs> so, I'm going to. Yeah. You know, so I'll, I'll, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot him with uh, a chemical bath of compounds and components that I find on here in yeah. Vegas. Um, Sean Sullivan put a super chat on, but I didn't see it. I'm sorry, Sean. That was my fault. I wasn't. It's not ignoring them. I was so involved in the chat. I wasn't looking at the comments. I apologize. And um, we'll keep an eye open for any more that pop up. Though I will watch for them. Um, so where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm deciding that canon has got to be fluid as well. And it's just if they've got a good story, then 
they shouldn't yeah. have the cannon yeah. block it in. If a good story is a good story at the end of the day. I've met some amazing people at this convention who, um, you know, like they're members of their own Starfleet organization. They have, you know, rules and they're all over the world and there's, you know, hundreds or thousands of them. Um, if, if you want to be that hardcore about your canon and uh, role play in that way, there's, there's, there's a space for you to do it and there's people who really want to do that with you. Um, yeah. But as far as watching an episode of Star Trek, I, I kind of like it to be a little gray. Fluid. A little fluid. Well, it's, I think it's it's nice that people do get passionate about it, though, because it means because we love it. At the end of the day, I wouldn't if I didn't love Star Trek, I wouldn't give a flying crap that they get the <laughs> color of something wrong or, you know, that they, it's because I love it that I care. Um, and some people care a little bit too much and they scare even me. Um, but at the end of the day, it's because we love it. So, you know, I'm on a lot of groups and things and people keep saying like, oh, don't leave your negative comments at home. And I go, oh, well, no, these are people that love Star Trek. So everyone's opinion matters. We love Star yeah. Trek. Let's talk about it. You know, it's like. Uh, uh, yes. I love the talking about it part. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the next statement was prequels don't add to the richness of Star Trek. They just confuse things. Um, I, I hate prequels, Mark. I hate them. Yes. Um, I, 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 I really, really hate them. When they're good, they're amazing because they add a lot to the storyline and we can learn so much more about characters and things. But they're almost never good. And even Strange New Worlds... The problem I have with Strange New Worlds is we know where it ends. We know where it's going in just a couple of years. So they're having to create stuff like the Gorn. That are all of a sudden, these like, powerful enemy with brilliant starships and things. They, that's never been mentioned before in Star Trek. Ever. The Gorn was that one bloke kind of planet, you know, that was a lizard. I, I don't think I don't think Strange New Worlds is adding anything to those characters. I think it's actually taken away. Well, okay, so there's something to be said about the Gorn spe example specifically because the Gorn was such. I mean, talk about the crossover between Star Trek and wrestling. Like, it was such a weird moment in time. I think there aren't very many people on the planet, Star Trek fan or not, who wouldn't recognize the image of Kirk. You know, squaring off against that giant, goofy-looking rubber Gorn. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so that is a little difficult to do anything with because it's such an iconic moment in, not just in Star Trek, but in storytelling. You, yeah. you know, the adventure of story of narrative storytelling in human history. That is a <laughs> a fundamental moment. Um, uh, I, I do enjoy that they've been laying in the Gorn as like this vicious, mis uh, not well understood predatory species. Mm. Um, I think less is better. Uh, I think they may, I think what, I have a suspicion, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that you react negatively to the Gorn specifically so much because they probably showed too much of the Gorn. And they yeah, didn't I'm, let it well, remain a mystery. They've had some very cool sort of almost horror episodes with them, though, that they worked. I mean, like I said, they fleshed I out. I love them. Yeah. I love those episodes. They're really good. Um, I just wonder if it would have been better if they'd have focused. I, I mean, we have a load of comments in here saying focus more on the Tholians, which is an enemy that we knew were technologically advanced, as technologically yeah. advanced as us, or more so. Um, but they went with the Gorn that maybe they went with the Gorn because we don't know them, but now all of a sudden they're, they're sort of like a, a federation threatening species. So it's going to be interesting to see how that concludes because obviously we didn't we don't see them at all later. So are they going to get wiped out? Are they going to? I, I don't know. It's going to see very interesting. Um, where they go. Go ahead. Sorry, it's very loud here. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to make friends with them at the end of the day, are we? So it's just going to be interesting to see how they conclude that. That doesn't yeah. sort of affect the later. That they, they, they just don't get mentioned again, basically. I suppose. Um, I would also say, just sort of ge generically speaking, um, I don't. I personally don't mind prequels. I think it's fun mm. to go and uh, flesh out 
uh, w- universes that have already been built. Um, yeah. And I would argue that Strange New Worlds is not a prequel because Enterprise mm-hmm. made everything not a prequel. Uh, any any oh, real yeah. prequel would have yeah. to be before Enterprise now. That is a good point. I, I feel that's... I, were you a lawyer in a previous... <laughs> so I feel that's a technicality, but... I know a lot of lawyers. <laughs> it, was, it was a good technicality. I like it. Um, I just wonder, if, for me, if Strange New Worlds was um, Captain Poke aboard the Endeavour with his friends, it would have made for a, maybe a better series because it wouldn't have been the Enterprise. They seem to be obsessed with everything being the Enterprise. And I just wonder... Well, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, and I kind of agree with that. And... and um it's actually recently that I formed a better opinion about that. Connor and Dominic talk a lot about, you know, what the show, what the show they were in was about. Hmm. And Connor said something that really sort of rattled something loose in my mind. He said, the show's not about blah, blah, blah. It's about the ship. The the ship is the star of the show. Hmm. Uh, And it like, so much of my life finally made sense when he said that. Um, I think there's a truth to that. I think that um, there's this unhealthy obsession with the Enterprise, specifically uh, in the hallways of the powers that be that make these shows, um, yeah. that know that the ship is the star, and um, in an effort to keep the audience getting what it wants, they're just giving us more Enterprises. Um, and Kirk's. And Kirk's, more Kirk's, more Spock's, more um, Sarex. <laughs> more Sarex, yeah. Oh, God, how many Sarex are we on? To? Oh, we're on like seven Sarex, yeah. <laughs> so, how many uh, Sarex are we on? How many actors have played Sarex? Like seven? <laughs> yeah, like seven. <laughs> um, I, I, just, I just wonder, I, it's, it's a big unit. I, I, I have this argument with Star Wars. There's only so many stories that can't happen on top of it before you go, you know what? There's other places. Go somewhere else. There's like there's a lot of battles happening on top of it. Let's move on. We're on our third Kirk. I mean, I'd like to see different Kirk. you like to see a different... Oh, so you're saying they should go Voyager. They should, yeah, they should take do, a page from Voyager and Deep Space Nine. Why not do the adventures of the... USF Endeavor, or that you know anything, and just like, and let's see some new adventures and a new thing, and then. But I think it's easy for the writers because they're not tied down by what's already been on screen. They can do what was what different. was the name of the ship in Alien? Oh, the one with all the loads and loads of guns. <laughs> no, in Alien, the uh, the first Alien movie, the one that Sigourney Weaver blew up. Oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm to going to Google. I'm Anybody go comments quickly? What was the, what ship was the name of the ship that Sigourney Weaver blew up in Alien? <laughs> Sigourney Weaver's ship from Alien. The Nostromo? The Nostromo, thank you. I kept wanting to say the Botany Bay, but I knew that that was Khan's. No, that's, uh, that's Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. The Nostromo, <laughs> thank you. Yep. Oh, Alan got in there quickly with the Nostromo. The Nostromo. Um, yeah. Um, oh, work on. <laughs> Sean. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> and say why he's got in there. And <laughs> very good. Um, yeah, I, I just wish they'd done that. But but that, that gets us on to the next, next little thing. Star Trek Enterprise would have been better if it had focused and uh, sorry i know you got a lot going on around Mark, sorry um star trek enterprise would have been better if it focused more on the formation of the federation and wasn't called enterprise kirk's enterprise was the first enterprise now i know they got around that with technicality but and as a lawyer you'll probably go yes but it was in nx <laughs> class it doesn't count <laughs> um, correct that is exactly what i was about to say it was an but experimental was class of ship, and um, and, they, and they even got away with that in the very last episode because they decommissioned it literally the day the Federation became the Federation. <laughs> so they even knew they were like Federation decommissioned her immediately. Um, but it really could have been called anything. Why did it have to be the Enterprise? It have been I think it, it, that that goes back to what we were just talking about. I think that the you know that you know 
Rick Berman knew uh, that the ship is the star. And, you know, from the original series and into the movies, we had gone through seven seasons of The Next Generation, seven seasons of Deep Space Nine, seven seasons of Voyager. So that's, what, 600 episodes or more of television um, over a period of, how you know, 12, 14 years, something like that, 15, 16 years. So to go back to the Enterprise, I think, was a bit of, you know, nostalgia churning. And, and doing uh, Star Trek Enterprise as a prequel, I think was nostalgia churning anyway. Mm. Um, I uh, I don't know. I never had a problem with it. I like the Enterprise. <laughs> I just wish they'd called it something else. But I love the show. Um, I thought they got the technology bang on. And, and I love that, that the feel of the show was absolutely bang on. Um, I thought they cast it brilliantly, except for that Connor, Connor idiot. Uh, he was rubbish. Other than that... He's right no, here. <laughs> no, the casting was brilliant, honestly. Trip was brilliant. Malcolm was brilliant. Obviously, the pop, the, the, all these great characters, they, they cast it beautifully. Um, it was beautiful to watch. It was. Thick. I just think they put too much on that time travel stuff. Um... Sean Sullivan, middle name, Cisco, Kirk, or O'Brien? Uh, Tiberius is Kirk's. Uh, Miles Edward O'Brien. Uh, Cisco. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What's Cisco. uh, Cisco's middle name? She doesn't know either. The girl who won our live event <laughs> trivia contest <laughs> is standing here and she doesn't know it either. I'm gonna find out, right? Uh, uh, Lafayette. Lafayette. <laughs> I out Googled. I out Googled. Him. You out Googled. There you go. Uh, I want to uh, shout out. I got a message from Sean, uh, uh, who's watching our show right now. Uh, their their vineyard, uh, Alamitos, uh, just became the number one new winery experience in the United States of America. And they are a sponsor of our show. They're going to be, they provided us uh, bottles of their wine. We give bottles of, of alcohol to our guests. So we've got a lot of uh, Alameda's wine to hand out. We're really excited about it. Um, uh, I, so just I a shout also, out to Sean. I'm also open to being sponsored by any winery in the UK. <laughs> um, there's one in your toxic just up the road. If you'd like to, my email address is on the page. Um, that would be very nice. Thank you. Um, but yeah. So, do you think there's any way they could have saved Enterprise to get past the four seasons? What could they have done differently in the last season, maybe? Uh, I don't think uh, it had anything to do with the show they were making, and it had everything to do with the the infrastructure of television around hmm. the way things were changing in the television business landscape when um, Enterprise was out. Uh, if, in, if the in numbers that Enterprise had on UPN, if that was now, they would have fucking 20 seasons. So, uh, <laughs> Super Bowl numbers, I think. It was, was yeah, one, it, one way to it has, it, it has yeah. to do with, um, you know, Paramount trying to spin off its own network at a time where maybe that was a little too, mm -hmm. little too late. Uh, no one understood DVRs. No one wanted to understand DVRs because it meant mm -hmm. that the known uh, funding apparatus that of uh, providing uh, um, Anthony, Mo Anthony Montgomery and Ciroc Lofton are dancing on the table. Oh, and Jeffrey <laughs> Combs just walked up. <laughs> yeah. Here, I can share. I can share. Spin around, why not? <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so going next year. You so guys can't see it. It's in person. It's a lot more obvious what's happening on the camera. It just looks like a <laughs> bunch of people in a shopping mall. Or something. It's and I just want to point out that it's um, ten to eleven in the morning there, and yes. they're already dancing on the tables. Yes. Um, I, From the. Uh, Carrie, you're welcome for doing a double live stream. We appreciate you. Yeah, Kerry's a, an amazing. She she supports the channel 
brilliantly. So we, we love Kerry. Um, I just think, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I, I love that show. Um, I know people moan about the, it's been a long road. I actually really liked the starting sequence. We led a, uh, a sing-along of that last night. We ended the karaoke with that. Yeah. Oh, it was, it's been a long road. I loved it. Um, and I, like I said, the casting was perfect. And I, I, the only thing I'd have liked to have seen was the upgrades to the Enterprise. You know, I'd, I'd like to have seen the, the refit. And if we'd have got that, I think that would have been brilliant. And one last gripe. Enterprise had the best explanation for the change in the Klingon appearance. I was just kept that. The retcon really dishonored the work of the previous writers. They, mm. The Klingons, they're merging the Klingons together, though, aren't they? They're, 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 they're fixing that again. Yeah, they, should fix it, they, should, they? they shouldn't fix it. They should just ignore it. Uh, you know, I understand. I've had this conversation especially specifically about the Klingons and Discovery. Um, I have no problem with a, a filmmaker coming in new to the franchise saying uh, the Klingons are vicious war monsters. They were built for, you know, conquering other worlds. Uh, let's make them big and scary and, and you know, completely alien. And uh, I actually, I liked it. In fact, uh, what's her face is right here. The Klingon Chancellor from Discovery. Mary. <laughs> Is it Mary? Is she the Klingon Chancellor from Discovery? Uh, oh, Mary Tifo, yes. Huh? Mary Tifo, yes. That's not who don't. Oh, Tifo, right there. Mary Tifo, she's right there. Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much about her version of Klingon <laughs> while she's right there. Uh, and to be fair, no, but I actually, I like it. And I, I don't think that we need an explanation for why they look old school again. I think it's it's become a Klingon thing. They just change. <laughs> yeah. First, I think, I think, first they yeah. look like bronzed uh, actors from the '60s. Then they look like, you know, Romulans. Romulans. Uh, and then they just had a bunch of Romulan hats. So they sort of go that and, um, hat. Yeah, yeah. And then they look like Worf for a long time. And then they look horrible, monstery. And then they look like uh, updated Worfs. Yeah. It, it it fit the tone. For what discovery was going for, we'll go with that. Um, but but yeah, no, it was it was yeah. I think we just need to leave discuss the first season of discovery to it. I want to um, say something uh, about uh, Gabatron's comment though. I and I appreciate what he's saying here uh, and some of the other comments he's made. Um, but I don't know that, and maybe he's just making a joke saying dishonors because it's a Klingon thing. Um, I don't know that um, the you know, if I were to be writing an episode of Star Trek, if I if I did something that changed or adjusted or explained or fleshed out something that had already been established, I don't know that I'm dishonoring a, another writer's work. Uh, I, I, you know, I. Oh, no, we might have lost Mark. I suppose he is in Las Vegas. And the Wi-Fi might have uh, might not be amazing where he is and sat in a hotel. Ah, dang it! Well, we'll give Mark a couple of seconds to see if he comes back. We're hoping so. We've got one last little comment to make about the future of Star Trek. Um, while we got you, please go and check the description. If you're a side tracker, please go and subscribe to the Shuttle Pod Show. If you're a Shuttle Pod Show fan. Please come over and subscribe to the Sidetrack channel. We have videos almost every day talking about Sidetrack and Stargate and everything else. Um, Puka, maybe not all the killing is affected by the virus. Both type battle for power. I, I, I think there's, there's a. You could always just argue with the Klingons. To be honest, they're just from different parts of Kronos. You know, you get different. We we look different in this part of the world. So why couldn't you know, the Klingons look different just because they're from different parts of Kronos. I don't know. Also, it's an empire. Their empire could be vast. It could be a hundred different worlds that, you know, they are come in and out of. So, again, you could have different types of Klingon. So I don't think the different types of um, Klingons is a problem. From Dumpster to the Grave... All we needed to explain the Klingons was the line from Deep Space Nine where Worf says, we do not discuss it with outsiders. And Brian says, why the Klingons always look different. It's as simple as that. You could have just kept it that. But I do think 
Strange New Worlds in particular and New Trek now, they're trying to fix it. I, I mentioned earlier that in Strange New Worlds, they've started to sort of poke fun and have a laugh about the things that they've got wrong and the changes that they've made. But you get new writers coming in and you want to then put your stamp on things or you want to tell a story a slightly different way or with a different tone. And you're going to change the way things look. They wanted very much for the tone of that to be more of a horror. And um, we've got Mark back. So they changed the way they looked for that reason. Sorry about that. Not a problem. You're in Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So what happened yeah. off screen? It was simply, it was too real to show. It was. I, 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 and yeah, I don't, I, 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 let's just leave it at that. Uh, we've got one more little statement before, and then we'll let you go to enjoy Vegas. But well, not too much. Right now to enjoy. Um, Today, today's going to be, today's going to be a nap day. Is it really? Okay. That's good. Um, right. So we are in a golden age of Star Trek. Or are we? So what do you think? Is it a golden oh, age? I think we are in a golden age of Star Trek. There's never been more Star Trek going on at once. I mean, uh, Lower Decks is some of the best television I have ever seen. And the fact that the whole thing is a uh, inside joke for people like us, Star Trek fans, it's so awesome. You know, yeah. Prodigy got canceled just as I was getting into it. That's really sad. But you know, we had Prodigy, Lower Decks, Picard, and Strange New Worlds, and Discovery all going on at the same time that yeah. outpaces everything else preceding it. So um, I do think we're in a golden age of Star Trek. Uh, and I, I embrace that it's different than the Star Trek that I grew up on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you want to watch serious Star Trek, you watch Discovery. If you want to watch musical Star Trek, you watch Strange New Worlds. Uh, <laughs> and if you want to if you want to be a big giant inside joke about how big of a star trek nerd you are like me then you watch lower decks it's great and if you want to watch uh i'm not i, I was going to say something negative about picard but i'm not going to because i love picard i think you can you can dislike the first two seasons i was going to make i was going to make a joke about the first two seasons of picard uh, but i decided not to picard, even i will get angry at you if you are negative about the third season of picard um, quantity because, is not quality that's that's correct regulus zero 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 uh uh but i i do i would argue that a lot of the new trek is quality it's the best if you like special effects and everyone says they're into great special effects beautiful. it's it's astonishing the, what what it looks like now uh you know and the discovery brought that in like oh my god finally the, a tv show that looks like a movie you know it was amazing. Battle of the Binary Stars. Those whole, those two episodes of Discovery that, that launched Discovery. The they were opening, so good. A Klingon the Hello or the Vulcan Hello. I, I just loved it, the, the opening sequence where Michelle Yeoh and the captain, oh, his name's gone mad. Uh, oh, captain uh, Green. Mar -mar -mar Green. What? What's uh, the captain in Discovery? Mar -mar Green. Sorry, what's the captain? The captain. Oh, in no, those characters. It's the same as Empress. Emperor. Oh, man. The black lady. The black lady. Oh. Who's the star of Discovery? Um, <laughs> we suck. No. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was thinking about uh, Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. When the opening sequence and they're doing, and they walk out the, um, the, 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 beautifully made it seemed the, yes the way to open a new series of Star Trek. i was so excited about it unfortunately for me to go from there, sort of like, mm. i love the second <laughs> scene i love the series of, um but the first season, I didn't want to but as an opener oh, that was amazing. Um, i love all star trek you know I, there's a lot of people in the comments on our page and i don't know about your page but um mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if, if Star Trek, if a certain show isn't for you, it's not for you. That's fine. Uh, but I, I really believe I came into this conversation. I wanted to have a T-shirt that said hashtag all Trek is good Trek. And we, we we talk about it a lot. Like if it's not your Trek, I can promise you it being here is a yeah. is perfect proof that if it's not your Trek, it's somebody's Trek. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. Why shit on uh, someone else? who is inspired by it. 
or feels like uh, they're seen because they're being represented in New Trek. It's uh, I love it. I love it so much. I love Star Trek. I got, I was so excited when you when you said you wanted to have this conversation. I got so excited. I was like, oh my I god. <laughs> I have a couple of quite nasty comments about my last video. They're saying because I don't like the musical episode, but I'm like, what well, I was I raved about the crossover episode. And I yeah. know one of my friends who is a subscriber sort of said he hates the crossover episode, but he loved the musical episode. And I'm like, <laughs> that's, isn't that the point? That's 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 okay. But the thing is, what do you want to do? Do you either want a generic TV show that everybody is like okay with, or do you want a TV show that does take risks and does go a bit and they're gonna get it wrong sometimes, but they take yeah. risks, do something a bit crazy. Um give me the risks get, every time. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's that's the point of Star Trek for me. Then I want them to take risks. Yes, I didn't want to watch a musical episode. If it was me, <laughs> I wouldn't have let them do it. But I love a show that's brave enough to do that and to do something that I'm not going to like. Because then they do a crossover episode, and I've watched it three times. Uh, uh, Trek Trekgate just noticed that uh, we have a side Trek shuttle pod crossover going on right now. <laughs> we do indeed um, like and, and I'm going to do the Riker manoeuvre in a minute and uh, just cock my leg over the chair and it'll, I've got a bad back so it'll end up with me on the floor but um, but it got it to be done at least once Mark Riker <laughs> oh, yeah, just Riker um, thank you so so much um, do I say hi to Erica why not let's say hello to Erica because say hello to Erica <laughs> Say hi. Hey there. Hello, Erica De Rosa. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? How are you enjoying Vegas? Is Mark behaving himself? Uh, he's mildly behaved. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask about Connor in a minute because I'm hoping they're not. So, um, what did you say? I'm hoping um, Connor and Dominic aren't behaving. Dominic no, they're behaving. they're certainly not. Excellent. Good. good. <laughs> so what, what are you up to now for the rest of the day over in Las Vegas? Uh, so I believe we have a little lunch with Muhammad Noor. I'm going to catch up with him. Are you familiar with him? Yes, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I'm thinking about maybe getting some uh, Vulcan ears put on by John, who's right next to us. <laughs> we'll see. That's maybe today, terrible. maybe tomorrow. Huh? He said it. John John Paladin. So check him out. Um, and uh, she's got a couple outfits for me that I might be wearing. So that's exciting. Do a little cosplay. And then uh, I don't know. That's it. That's it for today. Just hanging out at the booth because I wasn't here yesterday. I personally wasn't at the booth yesterday. So I'm excited to just chat with people. Yeah. No, that's amazing. I, I said to immerse yourself in something like that. I just, oh, I'm so jealous. I'm, I'm <laughs> here in Britain where it's, yes, just started raining. Um, so <laughs> we haven't had a summer this year. It's just started to rain all summer. Oh, shucks. I know, but next year I will be in Vegas. You're good. Yeah. Have you been here before? I've been to Vegas twice, but not oh, to a convention. I had a there. I'm the only nerd in my friend group. So they wouldn't let me okay but thanks to having a youtube channel i've made new friends so i've got people to go with so um oh. san diego comic con and then star trek last Vegas. i think it'll be ours but, um, yeah, no, next no, year can't i'm gonna say hi to puka hair as a thank you <laughs> mark 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 <laughs> um uh, who's on the on the podcast then before you before we say goodbye, you know who's, who's next on the show? Who's next on the show? Yeah, like who's like our next? Who's our next guest? Yeah. If you like oh, that's someone. a fantastic question. Well, are we still going to try to snatch a snatch a guest for this weekend? Yes. We're going to try to have a surprise guest this weekend. So Excellent. I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, here's me asking a question you couldn't answer. I would pick that. <laughs> But um, somebody from the uh, from the convention is going to get grabbed and thrown into a room, are they? Yeah, we're going to kidnap them. Excellent. <laughs> good, good. Well, thank you so, so much, Erica and Mark, or everyone who's wandered off to with a drink, I should imagine. Yes. Um, it's been brilliant. Can you thank Connor and um, and uh, Dominic for us as well? And um, I certainly will. 
amazing to see live from Star Trek Las Vegas. Woo! I thank hope to so speak much. with you again soon. And you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. She is absolutely lovely. Isn't, Isn't she it? lovely? Isn't she the most lovely shy. person? Yeah, I got all shy talking to a pretty lady. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mark, thank you so so much for um well getting us into star trek life for one and a lot of people don't get to see this so we get to actually see what these conventions are like um well in- uh, i i like i really like that you invited me to have this conversation and i thought maybe we could make it a regular thing as our show starts to uh go to conventions and, and all that it would be nice to pull some people aside and let them say hi to you and your fans and uh this has been real great you're you're really good at um you're british so you're really good at having a conversation <laughs> and i appreciate it thank you so much for saying that i really appreciate it <laughs> Just, no, I, uh, this is great now anyway so um everybody we, look we've had over 250 people most of the video so thank you everyone's gotten comments as well Maybe contributions to sidetrack and to short watch show. Thank you so much for those. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Uh, Puka Hair, thank you. Jay Potter, thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Jay, so much. Thank you. No, you're very, very welcome, Mark. I can't wait till next time. See you Bye-bye. soon. See you soon.